From the onset of COVID-19 pandemic, I have relied on the latest data and guidance from state, national, public health officials on when and how we open up our schools. Prior to the start of the school year, we convened a group of education experts to formulate guidance on how schools should operate in the face of the pandemic. The only data that we had at that time was available from other countries and from the spread of COVID-19 in local communities. Today, there's growing evidence from within our state and across the nation that schools are not the super spreaders they were once feared to be. This is largely in part to the hard work and dedication of local districts and individual schools to put the appropriate safety measures in place. The supporting studies have found schools to be safe when they are following key mitigation strategies and they are implemented consistently. Correct use of masks, social distancing to the extent possible, hand sanitizer, respiratory etiquette, cleaning and disinfection of buildings and contact tracing. Those things that we've heard Dr. Bell say over and over again, she was right. In the summer, we didn't know how it was gonna work. Now we do. And that is why today, I am rescinding the initial guidance from our Accelerate Ed Task Force report published in June 2020 that bases school operations on community spread trends and data. Given the abundance of reports showing how low COVID-19 risk of in-person operations, rescinding the guidance that talked about the low, medium, high spread. We know now you can operate schools safely even under high spread in communities. A study conducted by the Medical University of South Carolina shows that there has not been a significant surge of COVID-19 in classrooms. Only 1% of students and staff in Charleston County schools tested positive for the virus after the return of in-school, in-person school. As for statewide impact, there have been 9,359 positive COVID cases reported in South Carolina K-12 students and staff since September 4th. This is about 2.9% of the state's 317,800 cases during the reporting period. Currently, 646 schools, over half of those in our state are operating five days a week in communities with high rates of spread. Many have been made in, in this mode of operation since the very first day of school. While many students and families have chosen and are able to successfully navigate a virtual learning environment, so many other kids are struggling. They desperately need to return to school, to face-to-face -face instruction as quickly as possible. They rely on us for that personal connection the controlled environment, safety and security that the classroom offers. For these students and families, we need to be face-to-face -face in a traditional model as soon as possible. Another reason, interim assessment data now has been submitted to the South Carolina Department of Education. Fall assessments that were given back in August and then those assessments that were given in December right before the children went home for winter break. Our children are experiencing more significant academic loss. This is most evident at lower grade levels where students are learning the fundamental skills of math and reading. School operational decisions making must rely on the needs of our students and the availability of staff. There may be times, and we're seeing that, where a classroom or a school or even a district has to go virtual due to the inability to staff the school for a short while. I understand that, and we will work closely with school districts with those decisions. Governor just quoted Rochelle Walensky, our new CDC director, who said yesterday, schools need to be open and vaccination is not a criteria for that. Now, I do support teachers being vaccinated. I think our schools are unique 
and probably as close to the healthcare industry on the impact that they have on our society, on families who need to work, on children who need to learn, on children who need to be there so that we can feed them and support them with their mental health and social needs. I appreciate Governor McMaster's logistical support in helping to ensure that schools are prepared when their time comes. My job as state superintendent is to advocate on behalf of our students and teachers and make sure that that time comes just as soon as it can possibly come. South Carolina cannot afford to delay going back to school any longer. Face-to-face -face instruction is vital. Families and communities and action has to be taken, and I appreciate the governor's support. The impact of vaccinating our teachers goes far beyond that individual teacher. It encompasses the entire community ecosystem, the livelihoods of all South Carolinians, and the future of our next generation. And Governor, I accept the responsibility that you've given me to make sure that every district over the next few weeks has a plan in place, working with our health care providers to do it in an efficient way. And I will work, as I have been, to make sure that every district in South Carolina offers a five-day face-to-face -face option for all of our families. Thank you.